Here's the million dollar question. Can the Auburn Tigers beat Alabama? You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Happy Charlie Tuesday to all who celebrate. We're joined by Auburn message board legend, Charlie Five. We'll talk about Hugh Freeze's presser. Uh, some interesting things there. Then uh, Jason Jones, Auburn defensive lineman, will join the show as well. But Charlie Five, let's start today's show off by asking a very simple question. Can the Auburn Tigers beat Alabama in the Iron Bowl this Saturday? Well, I mean, hell, Harson took them to four overtimes in year one. So, I mean, I guess at Jordan Hare, any, any, Jordan Hare, anything can happen. <laughs> you like my daughter? I got my daughter's, uh, I got my daughter's earphones to help me out with the, this echo I've been hearing. So I, you, you can I'm hardly just, notice them on your yeah, face. It's great. I'm locked, I'm locked in. I'm ready to go. No, I mean, at Jordan, at Jordan Hare, anything can happen. I mean, it, it absolutely can. Uh, I wish this what happened Saturday would not have happened because I think it will drop the the crowd down intensity down a notch. I think yeah. you had an opportunity to really uh, have it at a fever pitch, and um, I do think we're more talented than, than New Mexico State, but we're not talented enough to not care. Like you said, our care uh, you, you, we're not talent. We're not to the point yet where you can sleepwalk through a game, especially against a, a team. That I mean, even though they're G five, they're going to probably win their conference. Um, that it went one eight games in a row. Like I, I don't really understand why we thought we had arrived uh, after those three those three games. Which I kept saying, guys, let's don't put a ton of stock in things yet because you know it's the weakest part of our schedule. Yes, we've gotten better each game, but like, mm-hmm. uh, and then and this thing comes full circle. So uh, I again though, I talked with several people about it. Transitive, the transitive property of football, I, I feel like, er, like erases from from week to week. Like if, if if you say the way we played this week has has no bearing, like means that's the way we're going to play against Alabama. Then how do you explain Georgia? You know how do you explain? You know, I, I mean, I think those three teams that we played that we beat, maybe not too far away uh, from a roster from from New Mexico State. So. I don't think what happened has any bearing on what's going to happen on Saturday. I think they're they should be fired up to play uh, Alabama. If not, like we need to just get rid of all. Yeah, what are we what are we doing here? Right, just get rid of all eighty five scholarships and start over again. So um, I think they'll be ready to play. And um, it's just you know, do we have do we have the horses? You know, do we have does it have to be a tricky like. Uh, ball control type uh, offense to keep the ball away from him like we did against Georgia or things like, is that what we're going to do? Or, or like, I, I don't know uh, that I don't understand how you go. Like it's got to be money. I mean, you, you got to do something somewhat gimmicky somewhere. You have to, or, you, or have you just, to. you have to make it as chaotic and wreak as much havoc as possible. Make it as sloppy and weird as a game as you possibly can, because I don't think you can just line up and beat them. I don't think there's a whole lot of matchups where you're like, okay, I like Auburn there. I like Auburn's DBs over Alabama's wide receivers. That may be the list. That may be the list as far as positional matchups in Auburn's favor. So how do you beat them? Well, possibly, possibly maybe some pass rush. I feel like they've been a little bit susceptible at, at, at uh, a little bit weak when it comes to giving up sacks. I think what's his name's been sacked a, a billion and a half times. Maybe a lot they, of that's front heavy of the season, though. I think they've gotten better over the course of the season, but sure, sure. I'll, I'll give you that. Can McLeod possibly get a few snaps on, on Bama's O line? Sure, I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give you that. Why not? But golly, if if Milro can get can break the can break contain, um. It's just it's an automatic huge play. Like it's, it's just kind of going. been feast or famine when when Al, when Auburn's gone up against mobile quarterbacks. It's true. Like LSU obviously gave us trouble. <laughs> New Mexico State gave us trouble. But that streak there of Mississippi State and Vanderbilt and Arkansas, like everybody talks about how polarizing some of those quarterbacks can be with their feet, and they were all non factors for different reasons. I think from game to game, but in general, Auburn was able to stop all of those. This obviously is a totally different animal. This thing yep. <laughs> that's happening Saturday is a totally different thing. In fact, it's closer to the LSU side of things than, than the other. So I agree we'll with that. see. We'll see. I mean, I think I trust Ron Roberts' scheme on Saturday. 
and you'll hear from Jason Jones later in the show. Like he 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 trusts Ron Roberts' scheme even this past Saturday. He thinks it was more execution on the players, which kind of hard to argue. Just just going to be honest. I think the game plan will be good enough on both sides of the ball. I fully trust Hugh Freeze to put together the vast majority of the offensive game plan. I trust Ron Roberts' defensive game plan. It's just, are they going to be able to pull it off when it's all said and done? Uh, to me, it's going to be more about execution, not the preparation. I'm with you. I, Ron Roberts' defense has overachieved like all year, I feel like. That's what's so perplexing about what happened on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, it, it just seemed like it was just a – almost a 100% effort thing. Like it, it really, really did. And, and, you know, I've talked with some of the same people you've talked to, talked to that they need, they, there was not that leader. There was not that leader. It seemed like on any position group that just jumped up and was hollering and getting, I mean, it's just, uh, I just don't see how you think you're, you've arrived at the point where you can just sleep. Well, I, I've said it already three times, but I just don't, I can't fathom how you, you felt like, you could arrive and sleepwalk through that game. And and I felt like Hugh, I felt like Hugh uh almost like knew it was coming. I don't know. With some of the stuff he said in the press conference and I, I and then I don't know what to feel about that. Like what do you feel about that? But regardless, regardless, you gotta earn your you gotta earn your keep this week. You, you're going to have to coach your butt off to to even keep it competitive. And uh hopefully the Jordan hair voodoo uh you know happens. Can we dream just for a moment here? Sure. Do you, do you mind dreaming with me? I'd love to dream. Let's dream together, baby. I, I think, let, let's say Hugh pulls this off. He nationally becomes known as Saban's kryptonite. With yep. what happened against Ole Miss, and then, oh, if you can beat Nick Saban with this roster, just imagine what's coming. Oh, wait, you flipped Perry Thompson? Oh, wait, you're bringing in Auburn's best recruiting class in, in, in over a decade? Oh, watch out. And sure, you're going to be seven and five if you pull this off, but the narrative and the momentum and the money to on to victory and to athletics, it will skyrocket and the energy will be crazy. And once again, the narrative will be Hugh Freeze can beat Nick Saban. It doesn't matter where he is. That's what we're looking at here. And that is the best case scenario. And that's what we're playing for. Hugh Freeze can become Nick Saban's Jerry Creel on Saturday. He absolutely <laughs> – that, that is the New Mexico State head coach, in case you yes. didn't know that. So he could too become – A little too, soon a little to make that joke, but it, <laughs> that was clever. Yeah. He, I mean, he could. I mean, who? Could, nobody else can say three times. I don't believe that, that they've done it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess only Gus would be the other – did Gus do it? Gus did it in 19, 17, and 13. So he's the only other one that can say that that he's done it three times. So, yeah, I just – man, it's an, it seems like it's a, a daunting task. I honestly feel like the spread's too low. But, again, what what could happen? Like what crazy stuff happens at, at – you know, in that game, in Jordan-Hare, crazy stuff happens. So, oh, man. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Did Hugh Free say anything interesting yesterday? I think so. Let's discuss in just a moment right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the best place to find all of the qualified candidates for your business faster and for free. They've got a ton of screening tools. Um, they, add, they You can add screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and higher, it's why small businesses rank LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That is linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they apply. Charlie Five joining us on this Charlie Tuesday, the Auburn Message Board legend himself. Paraphrasing here. No, I'm not. I have the quote right here. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> He said, about as disappointed, this is Hugh Freeze opening to his presser, about as disappointed as I've ever been with coaching on Saturday's effort. It was an embarrassment, and it's just, it can't happen like that. It starts with me. I have to get our coaches and players ready to play, and I missed the mark tremendously. Um, he goes on to talk about focus, focus being a big part of the game plan. And it sounds like, and he hinted at this or alluded to this, before uh, before his presser, he spoke with 
the culture, I think it's the culture council, their leadership group. Yeah. And sounds like they had a really intense conversation based off of some of the folks that I talked to, a very honest conversation. And they wanted to address it. And so it sounds like the leaders of each position group before yesterday's practice pulled all of the position groups aside and said, hey, I'm sure some leaders handled it differently than others, right? But everybody was held accountable. And the players did that. I'm sure the coaches have done it too. But the players made sure that they were going to do that because they all know how important this is this weekend when Alabama comes to town, which is what you want to hear, right? Because I, I, I don't know how... I'm sure some players are, but I don't know how the entire roster could be over what happened on Saturday. I mean, these guys are too competitive, and I mean, they have pride in what they do. Like, I'm sure they're embarrassed. I mean, that, that, that's that got to stink. I, I don't blame them at all for feeling that way. And I don't know if it's entirely true that people are saying, like, if you don't move on, you can't prep for Alabama, you can't be ready. I'm like, I, I think those things can overlap. I think you can understand the severity in seriousness of getting ready to get ready for Alabama in the Iron Bowl while still kind of having your feelings hurt about how Saturday went. I think those things can overlap more than people are acting like they can. But regardless, that was the theme of few freezes presser. Oh, a hundred percent. And like, I don't think you let it go. Let it go. Like you need to think about that. Every time you get, you go to the weight room, you need to mm -hmm. think about that. Every time you run a sprint, you need to think about that. Every time you put the pads on, like mm -hmm. if I don't come out here and do everything I'm supposed to do, I can get beat by New Mexico state. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. I'm not there yet. Like that has to be on your mind every single time. And then we're playing Alabama this week. I have to come now, obviously, if I if I just come halfway, I'll get beat by New Mexico State. So why? I, I mean, I've got to just absolutely put the pedal to the metal the the whole time. Like I I don't think you need to ever let go of that feeling. Probably you could it, really in life in general. Like don't forget about the times that you know you you weren't prepared and 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 it led to bad things. Like that that needs to be something that always stays on your mind. You know, I, Free said something else in the press conference, and and I think it speaks to you know, culture. You know, you talked about Culture Club, which sounds like a superhero group, which I, I actually kind of like. But mm -hmm. um, you I'm know, sure they have uniforms and everything. Yeah, uh, building culture is a humongous component to to building a program, and and I know you hate the comparison, like you said it. It's and it, and it, and I think it, you can all, the only time it, it it I feel like it's not relevant is if you're trying to say that the loss is okay. But when you are at the depths of a program, and and you're trying to build a culture and it and it's not all the way there yet, stuff like what happened Saturday happens to a lot of people. Pat Dye lost to a four and seven Wake Forest his first year trying to turn the program around. So you didn't like the Saban comparison because he had won a national championship. Well, he lost to UAB his first year at Troy. Uh, I mean, his first year at LSU too. So like those things, you when you're building a cult, when you're building a culture, there is a ton, there, like there's so much that goes into like preparing that team to be the same every single week. And, and, and I, I just – and he he mentioned that you know you know it it's terrible it's embarrassing it's not the end of the world though like we're we're trying to build something here and if you screw around and and you let your care meter go on zero this is what can happen this absolutely can happen it doesn't have to define who we are and i don't think it will and i think you're going to see it in the recruiting uh, we yeah. talked about we talked about his press conference well they recorded tiger talk on monday this week and he said hey i had a big time recruit in town that wanted to come come you know to tiger talk and i couldn't bring him though because uh because it's uh against the rules turns out it was cam coleman back again you know in in, in auburn like uh, on three on three kind of broke that uh just before we jumped on to 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 um uh, to record so like cam that, couldn't just go to bomb Howers and just happen to show up well, you can't like I don't know if it's like you're with the coach, like it's a visit together, it's an unofficial visit. You can't buy him food uh, on an unofficial visit. So like it's just just things like that. Like he there's so like we're so far behind, like so far behind, like monumentally far behind. And there's so much that he is doing off the I said, I said, you, and you remember this, you can go back, you can go back and listen to the pods of when Harson was here. 
I do not care what the final record is year one if you are doing the things that have to be done to build. That means working the portal, going on coaches' visits, coaching clinics, doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And but the fruits of that we're seeing paying off, and I think we're going to see a payoff in a huge way uh, in December. So, like, the record, it sucks that we lost that game. But like, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't mean a whole lot. All it did is make his job harder, made him just have to work harder. It probably made some NIL money probably have to go up because uh, some players got a little bit more leverage, if that's the case. But, like, other than that, it, as long as the you get the kids in – and, and and you continue to drive this culture, use this as a teaching moment. We don't have to like dwell on it. Like it just it doesn't yeah. have to be a thing. Use it, make yourself better from it, then then move on and go win some games and get some recruits. That that that's the name of the game right now. Jason Jones joins us in just a moment. In the meantime, Charlie Five, how can people give you some love? Follow me on X at uh, the the underscore Charlie underscore five. Uh, the Locked On Auburn Discord, tons of fun. Be there every single day. I'll get in a dust up on the corner uh, at AU uh, AU Live every now and then, uh, or you can check me out uh, every so often on the Dab by Golf Pod. All right, Jason Jones joins us in just a moment, but first, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more or less. Then uh, two to six player stat projections, and then you watch the winnings roll in. I've never had, um, I've never had as much fun winning twenty five times my money, and you can do the same as well. Uh, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Once again, that is prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college or Download their app and use code Locked On College for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize picks. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. We're joined now by Auburn defensive lineman Jason Jones. Jason, I imagine it's been a, a very interesting and, and and tough last forty eight hours since since you guys lost um, lost against New Mexico State on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Um, I personally want to say sorry because like that 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 was not us whatsoever and like we didn't play our, our brand of football like at all and again I can't speak for the offense but I know defensively like that wasn't it we haven't showed that all year and like we I feel like we let the whole fan base down I feel like I feel like I I personally let them down from our performance so the best we can do is throw it in the trash because we can't do anything about that game anymore mm-hmm. we can't do anything about it we just gotta we we gotta we're obviously going to watch it. We're obviously going to evaluate it and move forward with it. And that's and that's that's all we can do now. How how hard is that to do, Jason? Because I mean, I imagine that entire locker room felt a lot of things after that game. That's just a guess. That's <laughs> just reading between the lines. Mm-hmm. How easy or difficult is it to just okay, let's go through the film and then let's throw it away because we've got a really important game this weekend. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. I mean, you you're you're gonna have you can't deny what happened. First off, you know it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt watching every single last bit of it, um, because we honestly killed ourselves. Um, we we really killed ourselves this game. Um, so but again, like I said, we we have to watch it. It's inevitable. I mean, it's it's there now. It's it's out. We can't just undo it. We can't go back to Saturday and redo it. You know sure. I mean? Yeah. Uh, we just got to keep pushing, man. And. I just, there's nothing more to that. <laughs> yeah. Jason, we're recording this a few hours before you're going to sit down with your coaches and your team to go through the film, but it does sound like you've gone through it a little bit mm-hmm. on your own. What what happened? What, was it solely an effort thing? Did New Mexico State want it more? Was it a scheme slash game plan thing? I mean, mm-hmm. or is, is it um, too early for you to feel comfortable answering that question? I know uh, my personal opinion. I, I feel like um, defensively, it was solely like on. Like, when I mean when I when I say it's solely on us, I really mean like as far as players. I uh, hope I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this, but look, I, I honestly feel I, I don't think it was game plan. Honestly, I mean, I feel like we have we have. I truly believe we have one of the best defensive coordinators in the nation, and I and I will say that till I die. I really, I truly feel. 
we have one of the best defensive coordinators in the nation. Whatever he called, however he called it on Saturday, I agreed with it. I mean, I I, I would have done the same thing if I was calling the game. Um, we just – and I'm not talking about – I'm talking about as, as a collective defense, we got to do – player, we, we got to do better. We sure. got to do better. You know, we, we have to play better – and stuff in, in all aspects. It doesn't matter what it is. We just we have to execute. We got to make tackles. We, you know what I mean. I, I feel like we, yeah. we we missed a lot of tackles and a lot of um, misassignments. But again, we we have to do better. Sure. Yeah. Right. Right. As far as uh, as far as narratives that have popped up since this loss, Jason, mm-hmm. leadership has been something that a lot of people have kind of been asking about in regards to, okay, the sidelines seem pretty emotionless. Did anybody step up or try to step up to to ignite, you know, I guess, energy throughout the Auburn team on yeah. Saturday? Or is this just kind of, um, you know, no, did, most definitely. Everybody I mean, we, had yeah. a, we had a lot of players that were like, come on, let's go. Like, let's, like, this isn't us. Um, especially, and, 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 and a big one to me was Keldrick Falk. Like, he was, he was ready. Like, he was, okay. and he, truly stepped up on Saturday and he was like, I'm like, let's go guys. This isn't us. Like he really showed um, the leadership in him to lead. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like we were, it wasn't like what you said. I mean, like we were, we knew what we had to do. We can, yeah. we, just have to, we just have to execute. Sure. Sure. So obviously the iron bowl is this weekend. Um, we talked about this a little bit, last week as far as how the players view this and how important of a game it is for the entire state. What uh, do you think the performance from last weekend will make folks even more focused on this game plan? Or do you the, think they're totally I mean, separate things? It's it's, I think it's a, in a way it's similar, but separate because we're playing different teams. We're going to game plan differently for each and every team. Like we have, for each and every team that 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 we played, um, I mean, it's again, we just gotta. We're gonna have a meeting today, team meeting. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about the truth. We're gonna throw in the trash. We're gonna, we're gonna prepare for all I mean, for Alabama, and and go from there. I mean, again, like we 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 got to do better. We know that, and I think this this week is gonna really test us on our focus and on. If we care, and I, I feel like a lot of people in the locker room care, a lot of people do, okay? and, and and it showed even Saturday um, during the game and even after the game, a lot a lot of people cared. A lot yeah. of people. Cared. Sure, no question. What's the what's the plan for Thanksgiving with players? I mean, obviously it's a holiday week before the Iron Bowl. It's a mm-hmm. it's a normal thing yeah. for these two fan bases to be used to. But what's what what's kind of the logistics on your end for that? Will you go home on Thursday? Will family come to you? What does that look like? I honestly don't know yet. Yeah. I'll probably like pop up home, spend some time with my family, then come back. Yeah. But it just depends, honestly. For me, um, I know I know a lot of players are going home, a lot of players are staying here. Um, I know players are invited to coaches' houses in order to spend Thanksgiving with them as well, which is a very nice addition, which I, I really appreciate. Sure. So yeah. Growing up in this state, Jason. I'm sure you've seen your share of Iron Bowls. Do you have an Iron Bowl memory growing up that kind of sticks with you? Um, kick six. That's an easy kick one, right? No, and I, I mean, I, I, and I've told everybody this before. Like, and I told you this before. I grew, I grew up in a Bama household. I, I grew up an Alabama fan, and um, at the time, at the time when that happened, I couldn't believe my eyes. The kick six, sure. and um, I remember the. I forgot what year it was. Is when Auburn beat them twenty six to fourteen. That twenty eighteen or twenty seventeen? I don't remember. It was twenty seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there was one that that Auburn beat Alabama on, like on a play action to like the flats, and then they got into the end. I don't. I don't remember that year either. It's just I, I remember those times because yeah. those, those were like you know the commentary, all that stuff, but. I think I've had to rank it. Well, obviously, obviously be kick six, the sure. twenty six, the fourteen, and then like on like the last play, play action play. So, Got it. Yeah, Got it. yeah, sure, sure. There's definitely been some moments, and uh, it's going to be cool. Maybe 
maybe another crazy ending happens on Saturday. I'd, I'd be all for that. So, um, in regards to you being an upperclassman and a leader, what's your role this week, Jason, as far as making sure everything that happened this past weekend stays on last weekend and doesn't kind of creep into the week? Well, how are you taking responsibility for making sure that doesn't happen? Um, I think the most important thing that we got to do, that I got to do, is just remind the players that like last week, last week is last week. We got family this week. Lock in. You know what I mean? Type, type of stuff. So you can't keep you can't keep can't keep last week. You gotta you have to throw it away, or you won't be prepared for you know the upcoming game. Um, and just to preach to the guys that like we can only beat ourselves. We 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 a lot of times players beat themselves it isn't like sure you know what i mean it's just like oh you misfitted oh you did this wrong you did this wrong if you would have did that right or you would have been in this position instead of this position we could have hit them for two yards in the backfield right rather than them getting five yards right so right stuff like that you're a you're a defensive lineman so i expect you to have a lot of credibility and authority on this subject but what do you think the best Thanksgiving side is, Jason? The best Thanksgiving side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but I don't. I don't really like dressing like that. Okay. Um. I'll, All right. I know a lot of people are gonna say mac and cheese. A shocking amount of people don't think mac and cheese is a Thanksgiving side, and I feel sorry for them. It is. It totally is. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Mac and cheese, um, ham, ham, definitely, ham. And I expect you to just come out and say mashed potatoes. I don't know why. I just, no. I, I don't. So a lot of people don't. I don't like mashed potatoes. How either. do you not like mashed like, potatoes? Just because I ate it so much when I was a kid, I got tired of it. I okay. Can't. Okay. All right. I use me and my dad used to make mashed potatoes all the time, all the time, and I just got tired of it. I can't eat it no more. I got gotcha. you. I got and you. I know this is gonna be a weird. I don't know if this is, this probably is a weird one, but uh, pinto beans. Yeah, pinto beans at Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Is it just normal pinto beans, or is there anything mixed in it? This is pinto bean. Okay. All right. Yeah, that is a little exactly. weird. That's what I'm saying. Not, weird. It's I weird. like pinto what? beans. I've just never had them. Thanksgiving. That's what I'm saying. You weren't expecting that. All right. I wasn't expecting that. No, you <laughs> always uh, you always uh, surprise me, Jason. Uh, well, cool, man. Th thank you for your time. I, I know this probably wasn't super easy to talk about, but thank you. And then uh, good luck this weekend. And uh, have a very Thanksgiving, uh, very happy Thanksgiving. Man. Thank you so much to Charlie Five. Thank you so much to Auburn defensive lineman Jason Jones. And we will be back tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.